All right. Uh, now that I got your attention with all those books, uh-oh. Um, so my name is Dan Downs, and uh, glad to be able to have an opportunity just to share some thoughts from God's Word today. And I uh, want to give a little shout out to my daughter who's at home here, our home, uh, from Denver. So she's visiting today but not feeling great. So nice to have you, sweetie. Um, so great to have everybody here. And uh, I, I do want to say before I you know, get into the Word that uh, I too thought about being inspired this morning. And not only those pictures that I was able to send to some of you guys uh, that can only happen in Tennessee, sun rising over the misty water, but <laughs> so I was inspired and, you know, as they say, when you look good, you feel good, you behave. So I'm just in my, my Sunday best, absolute best. So just want to throw that out there for Robert Storms. Um, so, so as we uh, get ready to, to dive into the Word, how many of you already, so I don't know what time it is, 10, 15, 10, 30-ish, has anyone already thought about work on Monday? A couple. All right, yep, it's already crossed the mind. Um, or school, or homework, or a to-do list that didn't quite get finished yesterday that maybe today it will get finished. Um, and I don't know if you're like me, but come Sunday night, my mindset, I, it, it begins to shift. And uh, a little bit of stress begins to come my way because I'm thinking about Monday morning and that's our, you know, kick off the week meeting and so on. So, but it, we, we already can begin to feel some of this, the stresses and challenges on Sunday for what's going to happen maybe next week. You even think about work. And, um, you know, I know that, I mean, I'm not from Tennessee. I love being here, but I know Dolly Parton is revered here, but I don't know where she came up with nine to five because even back then, no one worked nine to five. I mean, at least it was eight to five and now it's, you know, 24 seven because we're always right available. I mean, you're, you're reached by email. How many of you get work emails in your personal email? I hate that. Um, so you, you're getting a couple different emails from different accounts. You've got Slack coming your way, WhatsApp, WeChat, LinkedIn messaging, Facebook messaging, and even once in a while someone besides texting you, they'll actually call. So we can get all these, these ways to be communicated with, and uh, it can be a bit stressful because we do live in that 24-7 world. Um, I was, I thought about that, and I, I love to read, a lot of you guys do, and I looked at my, just a few books that I bought just over the last year or so. I'm going to read the titles, that's all I'm going to read, and, and I want you to just tell me if there's any kind of a, you don't need to shout it out, but if there's in your mind any kind of a theme here. Soundtracks, The Surprising Solution to Overthinking, Indistractable. How to Control Your Attention and Choose Your Life. Digital Minimalism, Choosing a Focused Life in a Noisy World. Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess, Five Simple Scientifically Proven Steps to Reduce Anxiety, Stress, and Toxic Thinking. The Leading Brain, Neuroscience Hacks to Work Smarter, Better, and Happier. And The Sabbath. You know, there's some themes there, and, and, and especially, and I know Anton has spoken to this a number of times, it is a bit of an extra stressful time, and there's a lot coming at us, and so, you know, hey, God, we can learn, you know, about life in a lot of ways, so I think reading is one of those ways, but, you know, whether it's checking into neuroscience of how I can think better and use the brain better to, you know, or if it's just how can I declutter my mental mess and get rid of some anxiety, and even thinking about the Sabbath. And when you, in your life, how are you attacking or trying to defeat the stress and the anxiety that comes? How are you seeking your renewal? How are you seeking strength? And so Anton asked me to preach a little bit on the Sabbath. And Obviously, we're not under the Sabbath 
law. We'll talk a little bit about that. But there is a principle in God's Word. And it's interesting that the Sabbath is the only one of the ten that we do not keep. Okay? It's the longest of the ten commandments listed in the, the Decalogue. And it's the most expanded. That's why it gets it really expansive of exactly what God meant by ceasing. And that's what the Sabbath means, to cease. And so there's a real extensive... Um, kind of parameters to the Sabbath. And then the Pharisees, took, they took 39 different uh, tenets of work, or 39 different um, categories of work. Because if we're not going to work on the Sabbath, the Pharisees said, let's make sure we understand what work is. And so 39 different categories of work were spelled out by the time Jesus had come on the scene. And Honestly, we can, I know I can, I can kind of scoff a little bit about the, at the Pharisees, maybe uh, turn up my nose at them, are you kidding me, really, 39 definitions of work, and yet, we have a really hard time of not working. We can't believe the Pharisees would do something like that, but you and I have a really hard time resting. We have a really hard time to not work. My wife calls me the Energizer Bunny. And I'll be honest, it's not a very manly picture. When I think of the, the Energizer Bunny, I think of small, fluffy, and pink. And, the, and maybe that's it, the ceaseless noise she hears from me. I think that might be it. So the Energizer Bunny, and I, I get it, you know, maybe I have a hard time shutting off, right? Um, and Anton, I think, has actually alluded to this before, too, um, that my favorite prayer time is literally on the run. Like, I, I don't like to sit and pray. I like to run and pray. So we have a hard time, I, I know I do, of just stepping back and resting. The Sabbath, it was the setting of some of the most serious conflict that Jesus ever had. How many times would we read, now it was the Sabbath day, and then you can guarantee there's going to be a conflict between Jesus and the Pharisees. And strictly speaking, Jesus never actually broke the Sabbath law. Now, he may have broken the 39 extra definitions of work, but he never broke the Sabbath law. Colossians 2 tells us that the Sabbath, among other things, was just a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality or the substance was in Christ. Hebrews 4 talks about that though we may have begun to enter into this wave of rest, the real Sabbath rest is in heaven. So the scripture talks a lot about Sabbath. I want to talk about three brief things. One, Sabbath rest. Two, Sabbath connection. And three, Sabbath rejuvenation. Sabbath is to cease. So Sabbath rest. In Genesis chapter 1, and you you can turn if you'd like. I'm going to be spending some time in Genesis and Exodus, but if not, um, just please listen. So in the beginning, though the, the Sabbath was not an official law, right, until the Ten Commandments, in Genesis we see God instituting the principle of Sabbath. In Genesis 1, it says, Verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. It says the earth was formless and empty. Before God stepped in, as he described what was there, formless, empty, I like the way another translator calls it, it says, It was total chaos. That's what it was. I mean, there was nothing. It was nothingness, void, empty, total chaos. And there was even darkness. And anytime we see in the scriptures light versus darkness, darkness is the realm where Satan would be, or it's scary. It's there's fear. And then it was talks about the surface of the deep. Even that, 
So before God stepped in, there was chaos. There was fear, waste, void, nothingness. And then God stepped in and he created day after day after day after day. And then on the seventh day, chapter 2, verse 2. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. God finished his work, and then it says he rested. And we know, intuitively, God didn't rest in the terms of he was exhausted. God doesn't get exhausted. Never. <laughs> so he wasn't taking a break because he'd been, done so much and it was, I'm just tired. I've spent my energy. But yet, he rested. He stepped back from all his work. Why would the scriptures teach us this, that he rested? Was he setting a precedent from the very beginning of time that rest, Sabbath rest, is important. So much so that it says he blessed the seventh day. Hmm. He didn't bless the animals. He blessed the seventh day. And then it says he made it holy. He made the day holy. And up to that point in time, this is the first thing that God declared holy. And it was a day. It was a space of time that God said, now this is holy. This is set apart. This day, special. And call anything else in all of creation holy. But a spot in time. Hmm. When history began, only one thing was holy. And interestingly, creation wasn't finished until God rested. It's done. Now the seventh day is complete. Sabbath rest. Exodus chapter 16. This is, this is prior to the Ten Commandments as well. And... I'm going to read a few verses, kind of skipping a few, so you can just listen. But Exodus 16 is where the, the people cry out to Moses, like, are you kidding me? You brought us out here to die. We should have stayed in Egypt. We have nothing to eat. We're going to starve to death. And so God creates, or he says he'll bring them manna and meat. It says, each morning, this is in 1621, but each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed. Of the manna and the meat. And when the sun grew hot, it melted away. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much. And so Moses said to them, This is what the Lord commanded. Tomorrow is to be a day of Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Six days you're to gather it, but on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there won't be any. 27. Nevertheless, some of the people went out on the seventh day. Because they did have a hard time resting, right? Had a hard time saying no. And we, again, we, we mocked the Pharisees. They had a hard time, and, but they found none. Then the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commands and my instructions? Bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. That's why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two days. Everyone's to stay where they are on the seventh day and no one's to go out. So the people rested on the seventh day. God gave them this Sabbath time, even prior to the commandment of a Sabbath, officially. It says in verse 20, 23, tomorrow's to be a day of Sabbath rest. And he says, bear in mind that the Lord has given you the Sabbath. In other words, the Sabbath rest was a gift. You give gifts. You give good things to your children. And God says, 
and, and Moses said, bear in mind, remember this. He gave you the Sabbath. Sabbath rest is a gift. And so then it says, so the people rested. After they fought it for a little bit, right? After most of them tried to go ahead and work again on that day. Had to correct them again. And then they got it. Okay, so then the people rested on the seventh day. God wants us to rest. That's a part of his plan. But it's a little hard for us sometimes. We don't like rest. Um, I remember when I was in the ministry, my wife and I, years ago, and Anton and Sharon can attest to this. We, we were living in a suburb of Chicago, Schaumburg it was, and we're ministering in the North Shore of Chicago at the time, Northwestern University, about a 45-minute drive. And as was such in the ministry, days turn into nights and nights turn into days. They kind of, you know, coagulated, I guess, at times. Can, can probably remember those days as well. And, but, and so I'm driving back from... Well, not well met. Evanston, thank you. And driving back from Evanston to Schaumburg one night, and I made it all the way home to the street that I would take a left in my neighborhood, and my house was five houses down. Right before I made that left, I fell asleep, and I hit the neighbor's tree. In my, I was only going 15, 20 miles an hour, small little tree. Bottom line is I fell asleep. I was only five houses away but such was, sleep was like, whatever, really? I don't need sleep. Sleep's for the weak. Four Sabbath. that's right. I got a very brief Sabbath. And, you know, it, even in, in maybe, maybe more so for the Gen X and for the baby boomers, uh, I think that you guys are getting a little bit wiser than we did in our time. I mean, it was the badge of honor was how early do you get into the office and how late do you leave? You, you, yeah, you, you got you to gotta be the earliest there and the latest to leave. It's just this badge of honor. I worked long hours. And I remember when I was a baby Christian, probably about two years old, and my wife, already knows the story I'm going to tell. I was about two years old as a disciple, school at University of Illinois, Chicago, and I thought fasting from food just wasn't difficult enough. Now, this is a little prideful. Fasting from food just wasn't that difficult, so I'm going to fast from sleep. And so I'm a college student, and, and I decided to fast from sleep. So I go to school, yeah, I, I sought a lot of advice. Oh, wait, oh, wait, I didn't seek any advice on that. Um, and so, went to school that morning, classes that day, whatever, the afternoon, studied, and, you know, and then it was night, and stayed up, reading my Bible, praying, lots of prayer walks, and then, you know, that's a lot of time. Next morning, go to school, go classes, study, make it through the evening, next night, take a prayer walk, read my Bible, and somewhere that the wee hours of that next morning, I fell asleep on the sidewalk of downtown Chicago. I woke up to traffic every which way, and I am asleep on the sidewalk. Because sleep, who needs it? We don't need rest. That's for the weak. Uh, but it's funny. Then you read the scripture, oh, Zeal without knowledge, right? Um, and I read the scripture and it says, David says, God grants sleep to those he loves. He actually grants it. It's a good thing. Rest, sleep, it's from God. Hmm, okay. Even the secular world, even, even the, quote, unreligious, have caught on to the idea that, hmm, mental health and well-being is vital. You know, October 10th, if you didn't know, was... World Mental Health Day, October 10th. And at uh, and it was this this 2017 World Health Mental Day focused on workplace mental health. At my company, we have um, we lead an initiative called Mental Fitness and Well-Being. That's a part of what we do 
on the job at a stagio law firm in Denver, Colorado. How can we be mentally fit and have well-being? We talk about meditation. Yeah, in a law firm. Can you really? We talk about meditation. We talk about taking rest. We're talking about, you know, a little bit of neuroscience. We, the understanding is we need to recuperate. Hmm. But, but what we know, and hey, good stuff in books. We can learn from it. Right. Nothing, nothing wrong. Everything right. good about that. But what God says, he's the one that looked at the total chaos and brought order, took away the fear, brought rest. God, we need Sabbath rest. David says, my heart finds rest in God alone. Psalm 62. So my question is, will you admit and own your need for Sabbath rest? Like, being called the Energizer Bunny, maybe that's not the, my new badge of courage that I should, right? So will you admit and own your need for rest? And will you accept God's principle of Sabbath rest? Secondly, Sabbath connection. It's about rest, but it's deeper than just rest. It's not just ceasing work. Exodus 20, listen, verse 8 through 11, which is the actual command in the Decalogue about the Sabbath. It says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you'll not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in... Do you get the idea... God was like, you're going to try and fudge. I know you will. If I just said don't do any work, but God literally says, nope, no, no, no. Because you, you would say, well, okay, I'm not going to do any work, but hey, Junior, get out there and plow. Uh, hey, hey, you know, my, my servant's here. Or, well, at least my oxen or my donkey. Or wait, maybe someone traveling from another city, I can have them do it. God gets really specific. Nope, rest. For in six days... The Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that's in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath and made it holy. The scripture says, remember the Sabbath day. It's a Sabbath to the Lord. It's a Sabbath to the Lord. It's not just a Sabbath, rest. There's a purpose, and that is to connect with God. Perhaps Sunday, our Sabbath, just think about it, maybe it should be more about God and less about not working. Maybe a little bit more about God than just it's a weekend. We don't follow the Sabbath on a Saturday, but is the principle completely to be negated perhaps sunday should be more about god and you know nothing wrong you know i'm just throwing that out there and and you know you can guarantee come sunday night late tonight i'll, I'll probably be watching the steelers game but i'm going to do it as to the lord all right um so amen can i get an amen uh, but sundays can be to the Lord more perhaps than we make them. Maybe that is the time to take that extra prayer walk. Maybe it's that time to go get in nature. Maybe it's that time to have some extra time with God outside of that early morning time. Exodus 20, we're reading here. He says, why? In verse 11, it says, for, that conjunction, for or because. Why do this? For in six days God created, and the seventh he rested. So part of this Sabbath rest, to get Sabbath connection, is to connect to God as our creator. To remember, oh yeah, he created it like that. If he created it all, can he not supply all my needs? Financially, career, health, 
family challenges, finances, spiritual, parenting. If he created it all, he can supply our needs. If he created it all, all is anything too hard for him? Sabbath connection with God as our creator. Deuteronomy 5, just listen to this. This is the second giving of the Ten Commandments. And the scripture says, Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you'll labor and do all your work. The seventh is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work, neither you nor your son, your daughter, your male or female servant, nor your ox or your donkey, or any of your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest just as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand, mighty hand and an outstretched arm. So to connect on the Sabbath rest and the Sabbath connection, remember God as creator and remember him as deliverer. You were slaves in Egypt. Look what God did. This is why you have the Sabbath day. You need to take time and look back and see, wow, look what God did. Do we take that time to connect and look back at the Egypt that God brought us out of? The sin that entangled us, that was destroying us. Think of all the intricacies of God's calling for you to become a Christian. I remember my wife, she was, she had taken a visit to Ball State, Indiana, Muncie, Indiana, and um, boyfriend had become a Christian, went to Ball State. She's an IU, I mean, so Indiana University, Ball State, you know, you don't, you don't appreciate one another to say the least. So her, she goes to Ball State, she visits there, and she's leaving. She's getting ready, she's taken off, and her car breaks down. And she has, to, she has to go back, and the part that needed to be fixed wouldn't arrive for a number of days. So she spent the week there, went to church, studied the Bible, became a Christian, changed schools, went to Ball State. The intricacies, and you have those same stories. And the scripture says, you should have that Sabbath to look back at your Egypt. And look what God did. The spe specificity of his calling for you to become a disciple. Wow. Think about what God has done. Then Exodus 31 In that Sabbath connection, 31.12 says, The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come. Why? So that you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Why have a Sabbath rest? To connect with the fact that God has made me holy. Not only is he the creator of all, not only uh, has he delivered us, but he's making us holy. He's sanctifying us, and it never stops. Sabbath rest is not just to chill. It's to connect with God. Isaiah 58 tells us that it's a joy. So how can we take Sabbaths to connect? Of course, we can that time in the morning, if that's when you have your time with God, that's, that's a little Sabbath rest. It's you cease from the world, you pull back, and you connect with God in a quiet time. And it's interesting that we call it quiet time. Maybe it's because there is something valuable about shutting out the noise to get rest. We can have our Sabbath rest on a daily basis, right there, connecting with God. And, and maybe even some of that, start that quiet time with just pure silence. I, I read up, and a lot of you guys, I'm sure, have 
do this or have done it. You know, I read a book a couple years ago called The Miracle Morning and, you know, had some great things about kind of having a great morning. And But one of the simple things was it talked about was that little bit of time of meditation. Now, this guy is not spiritual in the least who wrote this book. and But it was like starts off every day with meditation. And so I just added that to my time in the mornings. Just a couple minutes, two minutes. And, you know, even at work, when our executive team gathers together for that Monday meeting, actually, this is a, it's a Wednesday meeting for this one, and we literally start that meeting with 60 seconds. Everybody goes on mute on Zoom, puts the phone down, start the timer, close your eyes. Executives at a law firm, close your eyes, 60 seconds. And we take 60 seconds. Because there's something about rest. Do you know there's at least 31 scriptures in the Bible that talk about meditation? So we can have our Sabbaths in our time with God every day. We can have our Sabbaths in some silence. We can have our Sabbaths right here on a Sunday, taking some special time on Sundays to make it as to the Lord. How can you make it more God-focused, your Sundays? How about monthly or quarterly? I remember a while back I set this goal, did it for a while, and then I got out of it, and this has reminded me, oh, yeah. I was like, I want to have a special date with God once a month. I remember a number of years ago, I, a friend of mine had a cabin in uh, the mountains in Denver, and uh, he called it the Shabin because it wasn't really a nice cabin. It was literally a shabbin. It was shabby. It had one room. It had a place for like, like a Bunsen burner or something and a little bunk, and that's it. It was, was you know, nothing. And I took my Songs of the Kingdom book, I took my journal and my Bible and, and left the phone in the car. And I was, it was uh, uh, most all the day Friday, all day Saturday, and Sunday afternoon I drove home. That was a long, for me, it's a long two and a half days. There was, I talked to no one. I saw no one. I didn't check anything on a phone for two and a half days. I just read my Bible and prayed and walked and sang and journaled. And then I would read my Bible and pray and walk and sing and journal. And I'd wake up and walk and pray. And yep. did you sleep? I did. Thank you. Good call. Thank you. <laughs> so... But maybe you take some special time like that once a quarter. Just go get a date time with God, a Sabbath weekend with God. You know what a sabbatical is. The world's done sabbaticals for a while. In the education, right, field, sometimes they take a sabbatical to go get a new degree or study something else or go teach at a university in another country or med the medical field takes sabbaticals. Ministers take sabbaticals. There's a reason for it. Sabbath rest and Sabbath connection. John Piper wrote a book called Desiring God. Maybe you've read it, love it. He says that God is most glorified in us when we're most satisfied in him. God is most glorified in us when we're most satisfied in Him. That's what a Sabbath connection is. It's to find our satisfaction in Him. And didn't He say that to Abraham? Hey, 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 I'm your very great reward. Sabbath connection. Will you ensure that your Sabbath times are not just about resting, but connecting with God? And lastly and shortly, Sabbath rest and Sabbath connection leads to Sabbath rejuvenation. That connection with God, have you ever known anyone to get connected with God and not be dramatically changed? Moses, not even Jesus. Moses goes up on the mountain and he spends some time with God and he walks down and his face shines so brightly, he has to cover it up. People are going to be afraid of him. 
When you spend time with God, something happens. Moses, needless to say, was energized. He was changed by getting connected with God. Jesus takes 40 days in the wilderness. Anton talked about that with the wild beasts, the angels. And he connected with God for 40, in a different way. Let's be honest. Jesus was connected with God. He was God. But this was 40 days. As far as we know, he hadn't taken 40 days in a wilderness before to connect with God because he was about to start his ministry. And he, after coming out of that connection Sabbath with God, oh yeah, he started something that's changed the world like nothing in the history of mankind, what Jesus did, because he connected in a special way. Oh, Zacchaeus connected with, with Jesus for just a little bit of time, and you talk about repentance. The demon-possessed man, I call him Crazy Harry. Crazy Harry in the tombs, right? He was, he was out in, in, the, in the tombs, and people were afraid of him. They relegated him away. He was, everybody was afraid of him. He's cutting himself. He's crying out. He's naked. Jesus spends just a little time with them. They get connected, and he's like dressed in his right mind like Al is today. He's just dressed, his right mind, having a normal conversation. Changed. <laughs> That's right. That's true. Good call. Um, Peter and John spent some time with Jesus, and what they were like, oh, whoa, whoa. This courage that I see in Peter and John, they've been, he's, they've been with Jesus. Because when you get Sabbath rest and Sabbath connection, you're rejuvenated. You and I. One of my favorite scriptures, and I'm going to quote it to you from, I think it's called the New Revised Standard Version because I remember it when I was a kid. 2 Corinthians 3.18 because this whole rejuvenation is for you and I. And we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed from one degree of glory to another. And this comes from the Lord, who's the Spirit. What he's saying here is that you and I, if we behold Jesus, if we'll shut it out, we'll get some Sabbath rest and connect, and we'll shut it out, and we behold Jesus, whether it's in the Scriptures or a sunrise or a great fellowship, but if we will behold Jesus, the Scriptures promise that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will change us from one degree of glory to another and another and another and another and another to be more like Him. Amen. Our call, behold. Behold and become. Behold and become. Sabbath rest. Sabbath connection. We need our Sabbath rest we need our Sabbath connection, and the promise is Sabbath rejuvenation. Let's take God seriously at his word. I'm going to ask uh, Pat, if you would, to close us out in prayer. Wow, what a great morning uh, to worship. Uh, this is really uh, inspiring uh, this morning. You know, Anton shared uh, how to, uh, we're inspired by God's love for us and how we need that. And, uh, you know, Dan and our Sunday, uh, how we need to invest in our Lord on Sundays. It's just awesome to be able to uh, be together and uh, worship like that. So this morning, uh, I'm going to close this out with a prayer. I'm going to do it a little bit different in, uh, in, yeah, 